Uh, okay, my volunteering in Myanmar. First, I will. Uh, okay, I don't have to tell nothing about the organization because I think everyone knows everything. Then about my volunteering and traveling, and then I will make some conclusion. So I was volunteering in Myanmar. This country is also known as Burma. This country is in uh, Southeast Asia. Here you can see it on the map. I was volunteering in the Peyatown Monastery. It was Buddhist monastery with around uh, 1,300 people. Uh, 1,100 people from them uh, were students. And from these students were 300 novice monks and about 100 nuns. And uh, in this monastery were around uh, 30 teachers and two volunteers. It was me and uh, Tina. So this was the monastery. This was the, the main pagoda. And on the left side is dining area. This is the, the yard. You can see here on the left side is uh, accommodation. Then these, these buildings, this, this is dining area. And here is volleyball playground. Uh, this, this stage is, is one of, was one of our classi uh, classrooms. Uh, and here around the monastery was a lake. Uh, every morning, all students have to have to stand up in front of the pagoda, and uh, it was like sport class uh, or Spart Spartakiada. Every morning, all students always divided on girls and boys because it was not common uh, for the students uh, be together, boys and girls together always divided on boys and girls this was the library and also also my accommodation i was living in the small room here on the side of the library this was how my room looks like small room no windows only one door uh, and the mat for sleeping and mosquito net it was pretty luxurious, the only place where I, where, where I had privacy. This was my bathroom, also laundry, toilets, all together. We used to take showers only with buckets. And in those buckets, we also do our, our laundry. Uh, we had only cold water. This was the toilets, uh, typical for Southeast Asia, no toilet paper, only also small buckets. But I have the privilege to, to, to visit the normal ceramic toilet in the, in the clinic. So this was a clinic. Uh, I was I was teaching English two groups of students. One group was 15 years old students, and I have with them two hours per day. Uh, these students were, I think, grade eight, and their yeah, English yeah. level was was pretty good. And then I have. Uh, Group of students, and they were about 18 years old. We had uh, together three hours per day. And uh, these groups we divided to, to three classes based on their English level. I was teaching the, the class with the highest 
English level, it was something like lower intermediate or something like that. I had 20 students in my class. I supposed to have 30, but then we make a deal and we decided that I will have only 20 students in my class. We also had a class in the pagoda. So here they were taking meditations and they were praying here. And also we had a class here. And these are all our 18 years old students together. They were together 60. I was teaching one group, Tina was teaching the, the second group and one of the local volunteers were, was teaching the, the beginners group. So this picture is uh, from the uh, final ceremony and we gave them like certificates. Uh, about the, the students living in the monastery. So in the monastery was 1,100 students in age from four to 19 years old. The monastery was like only the the accommodation for the students and they have they have uh, outside of the monastery they have kindergarten primary school middle school and high school and also in monastery we're living Burmese university students uh, in the in the in the time period they were not not on the university they were living in the monastery and helping stuff so this picture is picture from the evening the students have really strict program during the whole day this photo is the is photo from from evening and they were doing their homeworks in pagoda were only girls again divided to girls and boys in pagoda only girls in dining area only boys again the photo from the morning exercise it was really funny because al almost 700 students were always standing every morning like this and uh, before every uh, on, a, on the beginning of every day before the school starts they also have to stand up like this in front of the schools these are young novices always always tired because the students have, have to wake up at 4 a.m then they have a quick time for the, the the hygiene and after that they have to take morning morning meditation morning praying after that was breakfast and this was going till till 10 uh, in the evening so the students were mostly really tired this is i think dinner okay and about the village where i was volunteering uh in the village were around 400 people uh, for 400 people living the village has uh, around 100 houses i would call it restaurant or street food but it was it was like simple stands with two kinds of food almost every of these street food was the same with the same price no creativity uh we have about five shops. Also, these shops were inside of the people's houses. They have in every shop the same, the same stock with the same price. So, and every every five days we had the market. This was the only opportunity to buy some fruits or, or some vegetables or something different because this market was uh, was uh, 
um, was going uh, from uh, from each village in the in the surrounding area I and mean, in every village was for one day only and we have one coffee in the village and it was in the hotel it was pretty luxurious hotel we will see it on the picture so this is how the village looks like simple simple buildings And this was the hotel, only place where I can I could drink coffee. The coffee was the hotel was really expensive. It was about one hundred and seventy dollars per night, but the coffee was not so expensive. It was only about one euro. So and the and the traveling I did during the volunteering. I was on the trips with my uh, during my volunteering because of the volunteering connected with my volunteering then some weekend trips and I will after volunteering I was traveling on my own. So these are the places I visit in, in Myanmar. I don't know do we have time for this or I will only show the, the trips with my students. No, I think we have time. I hope that people are interested about country too. It means yes, please do that. Okay. So trips connecting with my volunteering. First was Yangon. Uh, it was the place uh, where I arrived uh, on the airport. This was also the, the city where the local volunteer organization was. I spent in a in Yangon about 10 days and uh, we did some uh, some 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 trainings with the volunteer organization I didn't I didn't make anything with the students here and also we have a lot of free time so I was I was just uh, discovering the city Yangon was really dirty city but with some nice colonial buildings You can see just the, just the pictures. How does it looks like? These are the more beautiful parts of Yangon. A lot of monuments, a lot of pagodas. First, I arrived to Myanmar. I was really interested into every pagoda because it was something new. The pagodas looks really nice, are really majestic, but. I would say after two weeks, I was bored of pagodas because every pagoda looks mostly the same. It is something like churches in Slovakia. We also have churches in every village. It's nothing interesting. I tried also the, the local transport with trains, with buses, with everything. It was really interesting. We don't have this kind of trains in, in our country. and. Uh, I arrived during the rainy season, so it was common that uh, we have more times per day, like really heavy rains. And after the rains was everything floating, 10 centimeters of water everywhere. But the temperature was always, always high, like around, around 30 degrees Celsius. So these are the volunteers from the local organization. Tina. After, after Yangon, we went with our students uh, to Inla Lake. It is really tourist uh, famous, famous destination. And this was the local way of transport. We traveled with these uh, small trucks girls were always sitting in the cargo area and the boys on the top of the truck it was really adrenaline drive for me but the, for students it was really normal and they were able to fall asleep on the top of the trucks and this is the inla lake typical with these boats so we 
so we went on the boats with our students and typical is this floating village this is village on the on the lake connected with small bridges this is how it looks like some some places are, are abandoned bridges boats next trip we we did with our students was Kaya State, which is really typical for these long neck, neck tribes. So this was interesting. And we visit also some other monasteries, some other pagodas and, and some other uh, religious places. Then I have to go to Bangkok uh, because of my visa. To extend my visa, I had to leave Myanmar and the nearest airport was in Bangkok. So we also were in Bangkok. I have a lot of funny stories from Bangkok. They tried to scam me, <laughs> but everything, everything was really nice. And it and it's good. In compare Bangkok and Yangon, these cities are pretty similar. Okay, Bangkok is a little bit more modern, but similar cities with similar traffic situation. Both cities was really dirty. This is the biggest temple, the biggest temple complex in uh, in Bangkok. And we can see the pagodas and the Buddhist architecture is every 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 city almost the same. We also went on one one day trip to to the uh, near city with train, and this was the the old capital of of Thailand with these ancient pagodas. Next trip with students was Pindaya, where we uh, visited the cave. For me, it was a really horrible look because they destroyed the caves only because the Buddha statues and then and it was horrible, like they cut off the, the stalactites. Like here we can see it really good, like they cut off the, the, the stalactites and put there these Buddha statues. For me, a really horrible look. This was the next cave. Also, they are putting to the caves this enormous amount of Buddha statues. The, the, whole, the whole cave was full of Buddha statues. And this was the way how, how, how we went to the to the cave. Like we, we, these are stairs, stairs to the cave. And also huge Buddha statues. My students always praying and bowing in front of every Buddha statues. Then from this, I don't have photos. Tina have photos from, from this trip. During the, the one festival, we visited in one weekend 22 monasteries around ours. It was also funny to see that every monastery in the surrounding area looks like the same. Then we take a hike to Yeapu with our students, and we saw that the, the local villagers are making competition with the self made rockets they're making the rockets and then they are competing which rockets will fly the longer distance funny to see and the, uh, i don't have enough photos but this hike on the top of the hill was also pagoda 
like small monastery and they built the small monastery only because two day celebration in the year so every year for two days the the villagers from the from the surrounding villages will climb this mountain and have a celebration on the top of the mountain and then the rest of the year it's, there there is nothing like no one we also visited town g the festival in town g the light light festival uh it was really crowded and it is typical for for hot air balloons with fireworks like these hot air balloons are not for people but there is there is hanging construction with fireworks and during the the balloon is flying 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 the the fireworks uh i don't know are turning all around and it's really dangerous usually every year more than two people die because of this festival like really crowded really dangerous here we can see the constructions with the rockets then if we have time we with tina uh every free weekend we decided to go to the on some on some trips for example and we always borrow a car from our monastery and the the head monk give us some volunteer some local volunteer to go with us so we we wasn't allowed to go alone and this was really interesting how this happens because the roads were so horrible and so destroyed everything was possible on the roads in Myanmar during the rainy season also also really muddy like we stuck with our car usually three times on every trip and we have to push the car out of the mud and again this is this these pagodas and holy places always full of these stupas and pagodas everything looks like the same also make some trips with my students on my own this was the ancient bridge on the lake the monastery was so sanka lake Oh, this was this was how they make the local alcohol from rice. So they are making alcohol from fermented rice. Also, they are drinking in Asia. It was not sake. It was some. It was. It had sixty percent. It was really strong, made of the rice. Uh, secret mountain pagoda we take a hike on secret mountain pagoda also near near our monastery these were only one day trips from from our pagoda from our from our monastery the local buses looks like this always some pickup car with the cargo area and also mostly the people we're sitting on the top of the car. And I also tried the local local tattoo tattoo. So I I I I have a tattoo, this bamboo tattoo made with huge, huge needle. It was really painful. And on the end the head monk of our monastery this guy took me to the opening of the of the new new monastery i think i was the first white guy on a, such a ceremony and i was going behind my my head monk and i was collecting the the rice 
the people were offering to him. Really interesting. Then I went to to meditation center. So my head monk sent me to the meditation center as a gift for teaching the students. It was a really peaceful place, but I wasn't able to to stay at this meditation center for for the whole time. After two days, I I decided to leave because it was really hard for me. No one could speak proper English in this in this meditation center. And I didn't understand and didn't know what to do. And at the end, I was traveling after finishing the volunteering. I had three weeks for traveling. And mostly I visited the people I met in the monastery. So one of the local volunteers was from Mandalay. So I went to the Mandalay to visit him. This is the Royal Palai. This was another architecture, more like uh, the, the Chinese architecture. And they have really, really good way how to, how to make air conditioning. Just open the wall. This is the second biggest bell on the world in Mingun. And this is this is Mingun. This is supposed to be the the biggest temple in Myanmar, but because of the earthquake, they never finished it. This is the Mandalay Bridge, the longest the longest wooden bridge in Myanmar. It has more than two kilometers. And also, I have here pictures of the waterfalls, which I visit. Almost no one was, was on the waterfalls. Then the, the most famous place in Myanmar is Bagan. It's like a complex on ancient, of ancient temples. Uh, oh, and this was the first place near near Bagan I saw apes in my life. Really, really funny. And also every morning in Bagan, the people can hire the hot air balloons. So we observe the, the sunrise with all these balloons. It was really beautiful. Then Piai. In Piai is the oldest village in Myanmar. This is from the village, like old stupa. Then I visit also Napali beach. It's supposed to be the most beautiful beach in, uh, in Myanmar. Like empty beaches, no one there. Because the tourist season starts after, after, uh, after winter holidays, like New Year celebration, and these times these beaches are full. But when I was there, no one was on the beaches. The way how they are drying fishes. Then I visit the capital. I, in the monastery, I met one girl who was living in the capital. Like the capital is famous because of these highways with no cars. 
the capital was built by the by the government and almost no one is living there only only our only people from army soldiers and uh, government workers and in this city I had always the feeling that, that somebody is observing me and spying me because so many so many uh soldiers and policemen and on every place they wanted your passport so it was it was not comfortable but the the girl i was i was visiting in this city was the daughter of the of the general or uh, general army general of i think artillery in myanmar so when she shown her uh, id we could go almost everywhere like on every picture empty no people like really like ghost town and the conclusion I, my experiences, I, I, I gained some experiences in teaching English. I learned the Asian mentality, Burmese culture, life in Buddhist monastery. I lived almost vegan life because we didn't have uh, meat in the monastery, only vegetable and rice. And I learned to be positive and patient, to remain calm in stressful situation to cope with uncertainty and complexity and to deal with different cultures, languages, traditions with openness and willingness. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Richard. Uh, děkujeme. Myslím, že jsme tu stále Slováci a Češi, že? Takže můžeme hovorit 